Porrick O'Brien reporting. Well, joining me now from our studio in San Francisco is Twitter's head of trust and safety, Del Harvey. Do you accept you've messed this up in Britain? It's a heck of an opening. Thanks for having me here. So I think that what I would, would ask is, you know, what part of this in particular are you speaking to? I think there's been a lot of misconceptions. We haven't done ourselves any favors, certainly, in terms of making sure that users know about what we already have in place for them and the improvements we've been making. But in terms of, of things going awry, Give me, give me a little more specifics in terms of well, what you Well, okay. Be well, look, the, the victims, to. the victims of this abuse, uh, the, 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 the the feminist campaigner, uh, Ms. Criado Perez, uh, specifically tried to contact a fairly senior Twitter executive, the head of news uh, and journalism in your organisation. He did not reply. He blocked her and closed down his account. Now, the first, the, the first law of Twitter is you engage, and if you're not engaging with the people who are victims of abuse on Twitter. You're messing things up. The details of that interaction aside, part of the reason that we have the process that we do, which is the ticketing system, which is the forms, which is the button that we introduced three weeks ago on iOS and mobile web where you can report a tweet just from that button, that's to make sure that those reports get to the right place. And, you know, in every company, different people do different things. We want to make sure that those reports get to the right team and the right people as quickly as possible so they can actually take action on it. And part of what we're working to fix and part of what, part of what we're doing with expanding how we're rolling out that report as abuse is making sure that it's really easy for users to find the process they need to use to get it to the team as quickly as possible but so they don't have an experience. It's a very convoluted like form that you've got to fill in. And if you're getting, you know, rape threats uh, every minute, uh, you can't fill in a form for every threat. And that's what happened at the weekend. I mean, you, you, need, you need some sort of system that is simpler and quicker, surely. I mean, because, you know, you're a massive social network around the world. There's a huge amount of abuse, not just, not just anti uh, women uh, abuse in, in Britain, but I mean, you know, there's been racist abuse and all sorts of abuse on, 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 on Twitter that presumably is just kind of going unchecked. It's, I, I think there's sometimes a perception that Twitter is the, the, the wild west, that there are no rules. There are rules. We are working on making the forms easier to use. We have the forms primarily because it's a balance between making it really easy to report content, but then also preventing others from using those forms to try to silence people who maybe they just don't agree with. Even in the current structure of the, of the reporting process, we see a lot of accounts reported not because they were actually posting harassing content or, or threats or anything else, but just because they don't agree with what the other person said. So there's this balance between making it where you know you can just say okay well this is abusive and then making it where you actually have to provide some context around it well, but you... the case of the multiple attackers or the multiple accounts that you highlighted is one of the areas that we're working to try to make it so that you know it's not this overwhelming burden when you're already feeling overwhelmed yeah, right I... the last thing we want to do is make you feel worse Th there's this petition going around though that is asking you to go further and is saying you know you, you should be looking at basically striking people off twitter removing people closing accounts uh and, and being much more uh you know reactive to to, to people's complaints are, are you are you going to sort we of change your now. policies I'm not sure of the de I'm not sure if that's the, the petition that I'm aware of. We actually suspend people now who engage in abuse or harassment or who post violent threats. It's something that we've done for some time. And you know, one of the things that I'm really proud of with the team is that we've been consistently evolving our policies. We've been listening to feedback. So something that, you know, a year ago might not have constituted something where we would suspend an account is now something that, yeah, that account will be suspended if we get that reported to us. And that's part of the reason that the feedback that we've gotten in this has been really helpful because it does help us make sure that we're 
communicating what we've done and what we're doing okay. and where we want user input. So just, just briefly, I mean, it's likely uh, you or, or somebody else from Twitter is going to be called before British MPs uh, at the Culture, Media and Sport Committee. It doesn't sound like you're going to be apologising for anything. I don't think that's the case. I mean, quite frankly, any time that someone feels we weren't responsive or feels that they weren't heard or feels as though we were insensitive to something like that, I absolutely don't ever want that to happen. And I, that's part of the reason that we are always trying to improve our policies and processes and make these things easier. I'm not saying that we can't do better. I'm saying that we're listening and we want your feedback on what better looks like for you. Del Harvey, thanks very much indeed for joining us tonight.